So with that, uh, let me start with uh, conceptual questions. A single slit diffraction. I do think uh, there's a few into, oh, there are only three questions. Okay, let's ask and let's see uh, how well perplexity does. Um, yeah, I have a suspicion that the type of uh, answer I'm looking for is a little bit too specific to me, which is why I'm not going to, you know, enforce that people have my model answer. <laughs> Let's see if perplexity gets my model answer, uh, which it might not. Uh, diffraction interference, yeah, diffraction spread out. Yeah. Um, classic example of diffraction is narrow slit forms a pattern on a screen, yeah, which would involve interference. <laughs> uh, the central maximum is larger than side maximum, interference, uh, and two or more wave uh, interference patterns can be, yeah, so single solid diffraction pattern. Did I, um, yeah, consider the phrase single solid diffraction pattern, pattern created, uh, yeah, interferes with itself. So I think in that explanation, you can get the sense that when someone talks about diffraction, that doesn't necessarily rule out interference. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think that's good. Uh, the diffraction grading uh, is in different direction. Direction being depends on the... Uh, yeah, it doesn't quite... Um, Highlight, it says diffract light into. The kind of the pattern you get actually, the easiest way to get the mathematical formula is by analogizing it to uh, double slit interference. So um, it, it, with the diffraction grading, I think the it's not quite getting the sense of diffraction, right? But most people wouldn't, <laughs> so I, I think I'm fine. Uses your diffraction, various contexts. Result for the past of a single slit and diffraction grading refers to uh, through the same physical effect, um, the usage of the fraction in the wave spreading and creation of patterns due to obstacles to apertures. Um, not in the case of diffraction grading. In the case of diffraction grading, the kind of the creation of pattern due to obstacles, that's like the least important part of diffraction grading. So, um, but, but you know, this would be a perfectly fine essay, I think. I'm just nitpicking. Um, Oh wow, did Richard Feynman say that? I don't know. Uh, so it's quoting um, a Stack Exchange page. Um, if it's nine years ago, it's not someone in my class. <laughs> uh, oh wow, maybe that's, you know, there are certain things in physics that um, that I know it and I don't know where I learned from. A lot of those happened to, uh, came from reading something that Feynman wrote or lectured on. So I can believe that I got this sense from Feynman. Like, I, sure, if someone told me that, uh, yeah, I, I, that makes sense to me. <laughs> so yeah, this is a perfect answer. I really like this uh, particular uh, reference. Uh, that, um, uh, now, <laughs> as I keep repeating, if you do use generative AI, use it ethically. You have to cite it as a source. You cannot use answers, even a, a perfect answer from generative AI. You cannot use it as if that's your own answer. It's not your own work. Uh, you might read it, understand it great. And then if you are summarizing it from it, I think that it's actually one way to make it your own. Because uh, perplexity tends to give you this long essay, and you can answer this in like a, in a third of the length and still have all the salient points. And if you're doing that summarization work, then I think... Uh, that's enough of your work in there to make it yours. And you should still say, you know, you summarized from perplex the answer. So uh, make sure you, if you're using generative AI, use it ethically, don't copy and paste. Use it to learn, not to cut corners. Um, first order diffraction minimum. Yeah, so I have to, it doesn't copy mathematical expressions well. So I have to type those in. Lambda where a is slit width. Uh, let me just spell out lambda. I don't know if it's going to get confused that uh, in one section I'm spelling it on, in the other section it's uh, using actual Greek letters. Second order diffraction minimum. A times sine theta is equal to two times lambda. Let me actually read the question. Um, when I'm doing this uh, typographical stuff, I'm not thinking about the physics. 
Um, oh yeah, divide up the whole slit into like a do a pairwise cancellation almost. Um, that's not the trick. Um, source of and like. Uh, yeah, that's not the trick. Let's let me keep reading and see if it does bring up the trick. The central axis conserve uh, certain angles. Okay, this is get get starting to get at the trick. Um, minima first order diffraction minima occurs path difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is the mathematical trick. And um, uh, I think the question didn't ask for it, so it might not include it. But when you are getting it like the, so that's the first order. If you are getting it the second order, then what you are doing is you are dividing up the slit into, I guess you are dividing it into three parts. Um, and try to make it so that the first and the second kind of cancel and the third one leave it alone. And, and so on, something like that. Uh, for second order minimum. Uh, two wavelengths. No, so I think in those ways they always divide into even sections so that they all uh, pairwise cancel out. Um, they probably don't, don't do the odd number thing, maybe. <laughs> it's been a while since I looked at it. Uh, yeah, consider pairs of points. Yeah, that's the trick. Um, yeah, good answer. Um, yeah, again, a little bit long, but good answer. Let's look at the last. Uh, let's see how it answers. And if it doesn't get from the context what equation 4.4 is, uh, I can copy that in. Um, it, I, it might already know about OpenStax, guess university physics, and know what equation 4.4 refers to. But uh, let's see. Parameter. Uh, I'll just leave, leave beta as a Greek letter. <laughs> Good question. So let me go get that uh, equation 4.4. <laughs> uh, so equation 4.4 is that. I can type it in. Uh, so i is equal to i naught times uh, sine of beta divided by beta squared. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. <laughs> um, It knows the reference well enough to actually get the beta from wherever it is. I think beta is defined up here. Yeah, yeah, that's the right definition of beta. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, this equation here. Is, but what kind of beta is it? Uh, what kind of quantity is it? Having, yeah, dimensions of an angle, yeah. Um, wait, does it, no, you, um, so it, it's missing the, like, these two things are not causative. So um, when it says dimensions of an angle, what it specifically means is the dimensions of radian. And radian is actually not a real unit. It's actually a unitless quantity. So um, so it's not, it doesn't have dimensions of an angle because it involves sine function. It has the dimensions of an angle because the, this right-hand side is dimensionless. So it can be interpreted to be radian. Um, so it, 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 the this is correct, this is correct. Connecting the two in this way is not correct. That's not. We can think it's like the relations between physical dimensions of the equation set up. Um, so I wanted to say phase angle, not physical, but phase. Um, you know, how do you spell phase? Phase. I wanted to, because um, it really it it comes, um, it's closest to expressing some level of phase angle with some numerical factor. Um, beta, deeper. Uh, no, no reason, okay, yeah, this is bad. Uh, like it, yeah, it's a calculated parameter, yeah. But it never says the word, the phase angle. Uh, yeah, that's from above earlier. So, yeah, so, I don't know. So the way it's expressing beta isn't wrong. Um, 
but it's not giving me the answer I want. <laughs> so I'm going to say it. I mean, you know, it, it's not wrong. I, I think, it, again, uh, just like with the stuff up here, it's something that's specific to me that I want to call beta a phase angle. And I can imagine other um, competent physicists saying that's not really a phase angle because if it were a phase angle, there would be a factor of two up there, you know, two pi, not pi over lambda, all that stuff. Um, so. I get it. Um, it's me who wants to call it a uh, phase angle. But, yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, this is fine. What it's saying isn't wrong. Um, other than it's not saying phase angle, but you know, not saying that it's not wrong per se. So, okay, so those are the conceptual questions this week. Relatively short, um, but <laughs> potentially challenging questions, which again, if a um, uh, tool like Perplexity is helping you learn, great, use it. But, you know, make sure it's helping you learn, not help you cut corners. <laughs>